Hello everyone, we got action news for today's video. The cryptic poet is sweet out. Lagarde says her hunch is that ECB will adopt digital currency. Let's check this out. European Central Bank President Christine Lagarde signaled that her institution could create a digital currency within years in what, in what would be a dramatic change to the Eurozone's financial sector. My hunch is that it will come. Of course, it's a hunch. But Lagarde said Thursday during a virtual panel discussion hosted by the ECB. If it's cheaper, faster, more secure for the users, then we should explore it. If it's going to contribute to a better monetary sovereignty, a better autonomy for the euro area, I think we should explore it. The president said it might be two to four years before the project could be launched as it addresses concerns over money laundering, privacy, and technology involved. It should be way faster than that. But they, the ACB took a major step last month by launching a public consultation that runs until the middle of January. Policy makers intend to decide around mid-2021 whether to initiate a full-fledged project and prepare for possible launch. China is also advanced with plans for a central bank digital currency. We are not racing to be first, Lagarde said. We are moving ahead diligently. CNBC Fast Money has tweeted out, Bitcoin bounces back. The cryptocurrency broke above 16000 today for the first time since 2018. As investors jumped back into the trade, Bitcoin baller Brian Kelly looks at what could fuel the bullish boom. Bring in our resident Bitcoin baller, BK, who joins us on the phone. Beeks, good to talk to you. Yeah, good to be here, especially on the day with Bitcoin above 16000 Yeah, what do, you, what do you think it is? And we've had notable investors come out recently endorsing a Bitcoin, whether it be Bill Miller or Stan Druckenmiller, you name it. Um, the Christine Lagarde remarks are interesting. I would think it was either validation of Bitcoin or it would be competition for Bitcoin. Yeah, so it's interesting. I mean, certainly having, you know, high profile investors come out and say that they own it takes a lot of the career risk away from investors, professional investors who want to put it in their portfolio. And that's what we're starting to see. Um, some of the buyers coming in are institutional investors. Um, in terms of the digital euro or digital yuan or digital dollar, it's actually not competition for Bitcoin because Bitcoin's core value proposition is that it has a fixed supply. Uh, I can't imagine the ECB issuing a digital currency that is going to have a fixed supply. In fact, I would think it would make it a, a lot easier for them to digitally print more money. So I actually think it's more th those are more of a risk for fiat currency holders, and it highlights why Bitcoin uh, is a digital gold-like product. Um, are you, can you venture to forecast how high this thing can go by year end? Yeah, so, so forecasting the future is very hard, believe it or not. <laughs> uh, but I, well, here's what I will say about it is that, um, you know, Bitcoin's been above 16,000, I think, 12 days uh, in its entire history. Um, I suspect there probably are some people that bought in late 2017, 2018 uh, that have had a long three years are going to want to get out of it. So I wouldn't be surprised to see it, a pullback. But in the longer run, my view on this is the market total value of all the Bitcoin existence is $300 billion. The total value of all the gold in existence is $10 trillion. If Bitcoin is actually going to disrupt some of the gold market, 300 billion total valuation is the wrong number. And you can see that there's a, a lot of scope for upside. And then add into that, most, if you look back at the halvings, which we talked about in the spring, where most of the gains come are the year after the halvening. And we're seven months into that year after the halvening. And, you know, Bitcoin's doing what it should do. So there could be five more months here of a pretty good upside. BK, thanks for calling in. We always like talking to you, our resident Bitcoin I, I, I always like talking. <laughs> I think he hung up the phone and he's still talking. He's still talking out there. Um, Karen, uh, you have a little bit of Bitcoin. What do you think is driving this? I mean, Stan Druck, I mean, all these big name investors saying, yeah, I'm, I'm in Bitcoin now. Right. So that Paul Tudor Jones, Stan Druck, Bill Miller, I think a couple of other things, obviously the PayPal news, mm -hmm. um, Square, right, having Bitcoin. So that's interesting to me. Even JP Morgan now has a, you know, a crypto desk and um, a, a crypto product, I believe they're working on, or actually maybe even in use. So remember, love JB Diamond, but at one point he did say it was a fraud. I don't agree with that. So I'm still long, who knows where it goes. Obviously it's extremely volatile, but I am in it for the long term because I believe the theory and I think we're gonna be printing more money one way or another. Look at that guys. What do you guys think about this video? I mean, is that the top for Bitcoin? All season coming very soon. Coindesk has tweeted out, just in, all eligible PayPal account holders in the US can now buy, hold, and sell cryptocurrency, the company announced Thursday. 
Due to initial demand from our customers, we have also increased our weekly cryptocurrency purchase limit from 10K per week to 20K per week. So it looks like people are buying through PayPal now, so which is a good thing, more adoption is coming. Super Crypto Wolf, a sweet out top banking regulator, Brian Books is explaining the significance of cryptocurrency in the current economic climate and in the future of banking to the US Senate. Today, roughly 60 million Americans own some type of cryptocurrency, with a total market cap of nearly 430 billion. These figures clearly illustrate that this payment mechanism is now firmly entrenched in the financial mainstream. Cryptocurrency has become a popular mechanism for sending and receiving payments for goods and services because transactions post in real time and provide convenience and security. But for coins, a sweet out breaking. Ripple is now the fourth most valuable VC backed fintech unicorn in the world. San Francisco based Ripple, with its $10 billion valuation, is behind only San Francisco's based Stripe, Shanghai based Lufax, and India based Paytm197, which are valued at $36 billion, $39.4 billion, and $16 billion representatively. Well, XRP is one source. I don't know how to answer that because if you took away our software revenues, that would make us less profitable. If you took away all our XRP, that would make us less profitable. So I don't think about it as one thing. We will not be profitable or cash flow positive without selling XRP. I I think I've said that. We have now. Peter Vassa sweet out. U.S. Central Bank plans crypto U.S. dollar. President of the Dallas Federal Reserve hinted that it was time for the U.S. Federal Reserve to begin work on a crypto dollar immediately. This is a clear sign that some policymakers view this as an urgent case that needed to be promptly attended to. It is critical that the Fed focuses on developing a central digital currency in the coming months and years. Look at that guys, the world's largest economy is finally considering the use of digital dollars following slow stimulus payments to its citizens. Again, remember this narrative it's is pushing digital currency faster and quicker. Roll XRP suite out. XRP community, David Schwartz, I've bought quite a few cryptocurrencies that turned out to be disasters, stated by Ripple CTO, who is a very frequent Quora contributor. Ripple CTO says he lost 300k trading no name altcoins. Ripple CTO says he lost three hundred thousand dollars trading no name altcoins. David Schwartz. Ripple's chief technology officer, has revealed he lost more than $300,000 investing in altcoins. According to a November 2nd post on Quora asking readers if they had lost any money trading Bitcoin, BTC, and other cryptocurrencies, Schwartz stated that he had made a few crypto investments that he ultimately had to write off as worthless. I've bought quite a few cryptocurrencies that turned out to be disasters, stated the Ripple CTO who is a very frequent Quora contributor. My total losses just on tokens that became completely worthless, is just over $300,000. Schwartz listed 11 tokens in particular that turned out to be bad investments for him, including Blockdix, TIX, DICE, Flash, Flash, VZT, VEZT, AMP, AMP, Signal Token, SIG, B, BEE, Kindads Token, KIND, Prize, PRYZ, Kudos Coin, Kudos, and Neuron, NRN. Many of the altcoins went to zero in 2017 and 2018. Overall it seems quite lucky that Schwartz isn't Ripple's chief investment officer given his history of bad investment decisions. The CTO also revealed in October that he sold 40,000 Ether ETH, in 2012, when the price was under $1. With ETH currently priced at $454, Schwartz's crypto stash would have been worth more than $18 million today. He also said that he sold an unspecified number of Bitcoin. BTC, for $750 and XRP at 10 cents. Many prominent investors hold altcoins as well as BTC. Billionaire Tim Draper said in September that he owned Bitcoin Cash, BCH, XRP, Tezos, XTZ, and Aragon, ANT, in addition to more than 30,000 BTC. What do we think about this right here? A lot of things is happening, guys. A lot of things is happening. We live and we learn. But who really knows what will happen at the end of the day. But anyways guys, hopefully you guys did enjoy today's video. If you guys did, please leave a like. Subscribe if you guys are already. I'll see you guys in the next video. Hopefully you guys are having an amazing day. And hey guys, see ya.